viewers and welcome back to the self-made auto channel there's a 2005 Toyota Highlander it's got the big 3.3 in it uh, I was brought in on a trailer now I didn't get a chance to talk to the primary driver because she wasn't available so I talked to another lady who give me the skinny on it uh, I don't know if it's the whole story or not apparently it quit shifting speedometer quit uh, they can't get it out of park without pushing the manual lever uh, stalling ABS and brake lighter on and that was about all she told me now she did say the other week a couple weeks ago she took it in for an oil change uh, someplace the cooling fan would not shut off she told me that they replaced a relay and then that's it that's all she could tell me so I don't know if all these problems you know stemmed after that or, or what the story was she wasn't hundred percent sure uh, I was able to verify you cannot get it out of gear uh, by stepping on the brake uh, I did see when I pulled it in the brake lights do work see them shining on the bay back there uh, the other thing I noticed you'll see I have the battery charger hooked to it it was dead when I went up to get in it not completely dead but dead enough it wouldn't crank now I started it the cooling fans are on or were on uh, with the key on and I also noticed as soon as I unhooked my jump pack from it she died uh, it appears that it is not charging I don't know if that if any of these things are related uh, but in a quick glance I did notice ABS light is on brake light is on it does not come out of gear cooling fans are stuck on and it does not appear to be charging uh, I did plug in the virus uh, I haven't used that little guy in a while I want to make sure it still worked there are no codes but the other thing I did notice is there's also no communications with the ABS module so we can't even get codes out of it so I assume that's why those lights are on Kind of an interesting case thought i'd bring you guys along uh, in my opinion i think we should start by looking at something simple like perhaps the alternator you know see why it's not charging i wish i had the whole story on this but i don't needless to say we're going to get started let's go check out the charging system so i took the charger off it for the time being it does start and run i mean it seems to run fine I'm just not sure how many of these problems are going to be related. So we'll get our test light 2.0. Now uh, there's that. I grabbed us a wiring diagram. Uh, let's see if we can see it here. So it looks like we have uh, what, four wires. So one of these is going to be our battery cable. I would think. Which one? The big white one. That would make sense. <laughs> uh, let's see. So we're going to have our battery cable. Uh, going back to the 140 amp fuse, so clearly that should have power on it. Uh, white with blue, that should have power at all times from the looks of it. That's going to be our S wire. Goes through a seven and a half amp fuse. And we should have a red wire and a white with light green. It's our L circuit, so that's going to run the charge indicator light and ECU ignition, hot and runner start. So let's first of all see, we'll grab a light here, see if we can identify everybody. Uh, I am 100% certain it is not charging. Like I say, as soon as you unhook the jump pack, she's dead. So I'll pull the little rubber. Oh, did that really unplug that easy? Oh yeah, I guess. Um, pull this little rubber up on the alternator. And something must be different here, let me show you guys. So you can see it, but this one only has three wires. We've got a red. Uh, let me just scroll down through our... Uh, red should be uh, ECU ignition fuse 10 amp. Hot and runner start. We've got a white with blue. That's going to be hot at all times. And then the white with green is L circuit. That comes from the ECU. That one's going to control uh, the light. So with the key off, I guess let's just verify we got power on the white one. Do we have an all white? Oh gosh, the all white is. <laughs> oh, I'm getting confused already. Okay, so we do a battery voltage here. Doesn't mean it carry load, but we do have battery voltage there. Uh, white with blue is going to be our next one. That is this guy right here. That should be hot all times. And it is not lighting up. All right, 
right, well, let me kick the key on because the other one. Uh, what is it? Gosh. Red. Should be hot key on. Hot and runner start. Let me turn the key on. Now the fans are going to kick on, or one fan will. Must be a tornado coming in. Junction box, I've set an inch compartment, so it must be that guy, the Spartan. Who's that man with the Spartan spirit? It's me. It's me. Who doesn't love some Will Ferrell? All right, and this says alternator S View 7.5 amps. Kind of interesting that we have no power there. Uh, let's see. Where are we, fella? Let's just get this oriented correctly first. Alternator S right there. According to our box, Alt S, 7.5 amps. And she's nuked. Well, that's interesting. What blew the fuse? Let's get a little pair of pliers. Seven point five. She is toast. I don't know if you guys can see it in there, but it's definitely blown. So there's one. And then the other one that is hot in the start run position is ECU ignition 10 amp. And that says that is an instrument panel junction box, left end of dash. So let's go check that one too. I guess we can unplug the scanner for now. We don't really need that. You see, no codes, no help. I believe they're hiding behind this little guy on Teoders. Let's see. What's it called? ECU. IG fuse. Yeah, it looks like that one right there. ECU IG. That is 10 amps. Where does that? What way does this thing go? 10, 7, 5, 10, 25. All right, let's click us some ground. Right up on the door check. Those are usually always pretty shiny. Or not the door check. This would be the latch. This has to have the key on. Hot and on or start. It says. Make sure our test light's good. That one's good. Check our 10 amp here. Oh, son of a monkey. That one's blown too, fella. Go back out and get our pliers. I don't have any 7.5 fuses. I'm out. We do have this 10 amp. This sucker is definitely blown. Oh, here comes the meat wagon. Well, I didn't see it explode, so that's good. Of course, the key's off. Oh, man, it's not the meat wagon. It sounds like the fire truck. Well, I think we're burning, man. It's been raining all day. So there's that. Okay, that fuse is good now. We'll have to go out under the hood. I believe that box had some spare fuses in it. I just ordered a couple boxes of... Uh, 7.5s, so we'll uh, borrow their spare for the time being. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's see, that was a spare, right? Yeah, so it does have some spares in here, which are these guys. So we're going to steal this one for right now. And then. Huh. Got some relays clicking. It did not blow. What's up, Mrs. O? Did you need your old order from Napa right away? The fuses? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, does he not have them? I've got one. Yeah, tell him to send it up in case, in case the sh hits the proverbial fan here. We're gonna need some. So you want one and have him order the other one? Yep. Yeah. Tell him to send me one box. Tell him to order me three boxes total. I can't believe I'm out. I almost hate it when cars come in with blowing fuses, especially when we don't have the whole story. I'm just kind of curious now. Let's take and plug this little guy back in. I wonder, I didn't look on power distribution. I have no idea what else those fuses are on. Clearly more than 
just the alternator. Uh, let's sit in here. Let's see if our shift interlock will start up first, I guess. I don't hear the fans running. ABS lights out, brake lights out. Does our shift interlock work? Hey, look at that. Our shift interlock works now. Oh, isn't this just lovely? <laughs> She's vibrating under there. Uh, I'm kind of curious at this point. Does the ABS work now? It's four wheel drive. Let's see, before we would just get a no com. Oh my gosh, yeah, lost com. Yeah, so I can imagine that there's going to be a ton of codes on this stupid fix it thing. Which we can see there is. Of course, there's no light on. And the light does work. It was in the bottom right hand corner of the dash. That's interesting. The battery light is on steady. Key off. Keys off here in my hand. Aftermarket gizmo here. Airbag lights on. And if you look outside, the headlights are on real dim. What in the thunder is going on here, fella? Turn the light on. ABS light does not come on now, but everything is staying powered up, even no oil pressure light. This is key off right here, folks. All right, super funky. TPMS light, check engine, I'm just trying to get an idea of what's going on here. that oh put it in gear oh man weird stuff is happening look at that put it in park fuel gauge goes up can you guys see it put it in drive fuel gauge goes down odometer comes on what in the world Ooh, she didn't like that did she Check engine lights on, VSC lights on now. We definitely got some funk going on. Try to do this with you live as much as I can. Go back in the ABS module, okay. Just for grins and giggles. Let's pop back out of here. Let's go to the engine. When I did an all system scan initially, it did not have any codes in it. But clearly, it has some funk. Let's see, let's go current codes. Obviously, it has a problem with the crank sensor because she just stalled. Whoa, these smokes. Literally, smokes. Ooh, smells like fire out here. Did you guys see that? That was scary. <laughs> I moved quick. Something over here was burning. A lot of smoke coming from this area. Did that open our fuse again? Let's find out. Let's just see. 7.5 amp fuse is blown and there was excessive smoke coming from the front corner of the vehicle. Let's just have a visual inspection right here. Oh, she stinks. She stinks. So that's interesting. It opened that fuse again. I am curious at this point. Where did that smoke come from? That was lots of white smoke. It almost looked like it was coming from inside the fuse box. Uh, let's go inside and have a gander at our 10 amp fuse that was blown. And then what we're going to have to do is look at a power distribution center or power distribution diagram to see who's who. Let's just shank that guy out. I need to see if that one's blown also. Sorry. Sorry for the shaky camera here, folks. I know you guys like your live videos and I'm trying to do my best. That one is not blown. Okay, so it blew our 7.5 amp, which we thought was a little curious anyways when we plugged it in, that it was kicking stuff on and off. 
what we'll have to do is look at a power distribution diagram and see is it supposed to you know is that supposed to run anything else are there wires melted together somewhere you know sharing that circuit does that make sense to you uh, because according to our color diagram on Mitchell which is not always correct it showed that just going to the alternator and being seven and a half amps I kind of believe it but let's look for real right now obviously our problem is there on that circuit somewhere and hopefully we got the smoke on the camera all right let's get a diagram not the jibber jabber I'll just sit inside the car here where it's comfy oh it's looking for my face oh it found it so looking at this diagram I don't know if you guys can see it or not hopefully you can um, alternator seven and a half amp shows it just going to the S circuit of the alternator uh, our short whatever it may be has to be on this white with blue wire of course like I say this is a Mitchell diagram you cannot trust these color diagrams they're often oversimplified so what we're gonna do uh, we'll go back into wire diagrams and we'll go to power distribution Oops, just to see you know if we can find it when the thunder this thing log now let me log back in so I grabbed an OEM wiring diagram and it shows the seven and a half amp alternator S comes down goes to a connector this EB2 connector which ironically enough shares the same connector with our 10 amp here and then goes straight to the alternator so I'm curious this EB2 connector power source system see page 62 but that should be all that's on it um, I'm gonna to try to find this EB2 connector here I'm curious EB2 don't forget that number uh, let's see connector let's just see where this little guy lives if we can find it sometimes searching for him is a little tricky I might have to do some poking, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's under, uh, you know, under that fuse box. Uh, charging. That's going to be the same circuit we were just in. That's going to be of no help to us. That is of no help to us. Let me do some poking. I want to see if I can find this little fella. Where? So well, I was looking just a second. I see it also pulled up our radiator fans here, which was running continuously, and that is also. Uh, showing this EB2 connector coming out of the ECM and that goes into some of the fan relays I'm thinking we're gonna have a bunch of wires melted together here somewhere or corrosion but let me just see if I can find this still found it EB2 is right up in this front corner so that's the battery junction box that's right where we were now I don't know if that's under the junction box we're actually in it looks like it lays underneath it let's go have a gander it must be these because EB1 EB2 it does look like show a couple connectors stacked which one is it, it is let's see the bottom one is that the right color wire oh am I seeing some crusties come out of that I better set you folks down Sometimes you just gotta follow the smoke, right? How the heck does that thing come off there? Looks like... Oh, it looks like it's gonna break if I keep fiddling. There we go. Little Christmas tree. Lots of wires here. White with blue, that was our guy. Well, let's see. It's kind of a pain in the neck here to work around. Get your own plug. This would be the likely spot for. Ooh, yuck. Oh, oh, baby. She has melted, and we are missing a pin, which happens to be white with blue, which happens to be on the melted side. out of there. 
right off hand. Let's give it a flip. Oh boy. She has been roasting. Oh, you can smell the stink too. I wonder what this connector looks like. We're going to end up opening up a whole can of worms here anyway. Uh, I don't think there's no getting this one undone. Mm. Yeah, we're undone. Okay, this one is nice and clean. I don't know what you guys can see up there, but that one is good. EB2 is the source of our smoke. And the inside of that connector is completely fried. There it is. One, two, three, four pins that are just completely melted. There is eight pins left. Should have been nine. Crap. Oh, that's ugly. So what do you do? Is that the cause of the problem or a result of another short? You know what I'm saying? How in the thunder does that thing come off there? We go off there, fella. I want to figure out how to get that off. Um, oh gosh, Eric, what do you do? Like I say, like I say, like I say, what do you do? Ah, crap. Because it is pretty, I mean, it's burnt and everything is just completely freaking melted. So, um, I don't know. pins are touching if they're burnt back inside the connector I really don't know uh, the other problem is is getting this connector it's not gonna happen uh, we'd have to get all new terminals you know pigtails the whole spiel I'm curious if we just do the old cut and solder you know what I'm saying either way all the terminals have to be cut so I think for temporary use, I don't see the harm in doing that. Temporary slash permanent. I think the only hindrance would be is if you ever have to replace uh, the fuse box, you know, then it could be a big deal uh, because you can't unplug it. However, with all the terminals being fried, you know, we can't even really deep in it and just put a new connector on it. We'd have to get new terminals. I'd say that's what we do for right now. That way we can keep progressing. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, I'm gonna take get the battery here out of our way uh, while we're waiting for our fuse to show up or our box of fuses, anyways. I can't believe I'm out. How embarrassing! Because what we're gonna have to do, I mean, it would make sense. You know, if they were shorted in here, let's say that fuse was shorted to the cooling fan. Uh, something like that, you know, it'd overheat the terminal. It's it's really difficult to say at this point, but we really can't trek forward until that's repaired. In order to repair that, like I say, we would need the connector with the pigtails or the terminals that we can put back in there. So there really is no harm in putting it together so we can move forward. Because until that is repaired, there's really nothing else to do. Uh, what we can do, or what I'm going to choose to do, is I'm going to take and cut it. We're going to solder the wires together. Of course, that's going to eliminate the connector. Um, if it is fixed at that point, then we will give the customer the option. You know, do you want to get the connector and solder it all in there? Which, honestly, on a 2005 would probably be foolish. Um, I don't, I don't really have, I don't have a better solution for us at this point. I think that is the temporary solution short of, you know, buying the connector, throwing it together and taking our testing from there. I'm going to verify that all the wire colors match, you know, top to bottom. That way we can just uh, cut them and they do not. So we cannot cut them and just go willy nilly. We got to do them one at a time because all the wires change colors. There's a lot of corrosion coming out of the back of this thing. 
particularly on there, white with a blue stripe, and that was the wire that was going to the alternator. That one's got a lot of white crust coming out of that thing. So perhaps they're even melted in back further. But they definitely all change color, so we have to be careful with that. I'm gonna get started on that. I'm not gonna show you that whole process. It's just gonna be your classic snip and solder. Plenty of wire here to do it with. I don't really see any other choices. Now once we do this, if everything on the inside is still acting funny, um, in the sense that, you know, light staying on with the keys off and, you know, the shift interlock working with the key off and all that weird stuff happening. You know, I'm not going to take my chance and, you know, go into full meltdown mode here. We will just, I don't know what we'll do. We'll address it. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So I was peeling back the tape on this side of the connector where I could see all the corrosion and there are some wires back here that were melted so we got the red with a black stripe and then we have this one here this yellow with a green stripe which you can see is right down I don't know if you guys can see it or not but it's, it's right down to the bare metal and it was melted right to this red with a black stripe now if I remember right isn't that wasn't that our 10 amp that ran to the alternator I believe it was but they were melted right together I had to pull them right apart and we also have some bare wires hanging or bare metal hanging out of the white with blue so it looks like those three circuits were melted right together and I bet I bet uh, I bet you that that white with or the yellow with green I almost guarantee probably goes to one of the cooling fan relays would be my assumption yeah lots of bare wire there and bare wire there and bare wire on the red with black ta-da so we'll get a closer look at this connector here let me get it unplugged here for you guys so hopefully you guys can see how melted that little guy is and this side of the connector was actually good as far as wires are concerned and then you can look inside the male half there you can see the damage that was in there and then we can see that one circuit there that is bare wired the other ones I think I cut them up a little bit further I did because I was trying to save as much wire as I could we can see yeah I guess it's our white with a blue we can see how that was actually bare back in there has a couple little strands sticking through it be interesting to see what this yellow with green ran I thought I seen that on the uh, wiring diagram for the cooling fan which would make sense uh, we can also see that I did solder and heat shrink all the connections I did them one at a time so I would not goof up the colors and oddly enough what's what's kind of bizarre is if you just did cut it there's a lot of the same color wires on this side that there are on this side that you would assume go together however they do not you know at least according to the connector but it plays mind tricks on you you know because you got like a black and yellow over here and you got black and yellow over here but they do not go together uh, so we're going to leave that like that for the time being we're not even going to hook this back to the box just yet we're just going to set our battery back in here uh, i did get the fuses there from napper where are they they came in on the bus that's, that's a fuse joke made in Japan I gotta figure out how to get them open without spilling them all over and what we will do is I will replace the ladies seven and a half amp fuse that we borrowed and then we will replace the seven and a half amp fuse that blew all right so that was nice of us to do we will stick the battery back in I'm gonna go over holy crap this guy I'm gonna pick you guys up and then I'm gonna go in and verify that the key is off I can take you with me. What the heck? Let's all go. Let's have a little go into the car party. Just making sure. Oh yeah, the key's obviously off because it's on the floor. Now we did verify that that 10 amp fuse did not blow, right? I think that was part of our process. We'll hook our battery back up here. I'm gonna have to 
grab a wool wrench. In the wool wrench drawer, we use a ratcheter. There we go. Mini toolbox to her. I'm gonna set you down. Alright, let's see. Alright, well, the good news is so far the dash is not lit up. Let's see if it goes into the. Alright, our shifter no longer works. Put the key off. Let's just go key on here. Cooling fan's not running. We have an ABS and brake light again. Stand back, that airbag light's on. Oh, it went out. Let's just make sure this works. Okay, that works. This thing's got me a little gun shy now. Look for smoke again. <laughs> Wish you guys could have seen that. I don't know if I got that on camera or not. Just shut it off. Gas gauge goes down like it should. Of course, you can't see crap back in there. There we go. Everything looks normal. Start it up again. Guess we should go make sure that it's charging. We can do that. And what we'll do is we'll see if we regain communications with our ABS module. And errors occurred. Let's make sure it's going to talk to. That's turned on. I just want to get this going through an auto scan if it'll regain communication. Sometimes disconnecting the battery makes the snap on very angry at me. All right, we'll let that do its thing when we go out here. If it's going to do its thing, it may not. Like I say, sometimes unhooking the battery, it gets upset. All right, let's turn this fella on. Where's the power button? There we go. Ah, ah, back. Got too much junk laying out here. I'm wiggling all over the place. All right, let's see. Get these extra long leads from AES Wave. That just means they get extra tangled up. I got to set you down. I don't know what the heck is rattling on her exhaust, but it sounds horrible. Hang on, folks. Come on, there we go. Quite the rice nest here. That would drive me bananas. Alright, so we're showing a 13 volts. Make sure I got a good connection here. is plugged in but it's only showing 12.8 and it looks like it's losing voltage let's go give it a little rev up tune up here it'll rev up tune up yeah it does not appear to be charging at this point I don't think we blew that other fuse we put it back in didn't we let's just see oh there she goes I'm charging now fellas Maybe the old flex pipe is broke. I see it's not like charging that in idle though, I'll tell you that. Bring it just off an idle. Where are we at? Yeah, that's where you guys can see. About 750 RPMs it charges. Let it go back to an idle, which is probably idling way too low anyways. 12.8. Just a smidge. Yeah, I mean, you bring it up just a whisker. And she's at 13.8. So it's likely idling too low from battery disconnect, what have you. Let me set you down here again. I'm going to hold it slightly off idle so we don't have to listen to that horrible noise. Uh, eight codes in the ABS. So let's go in there because the ABS light is not on. This four-wheel drive, I'm just going to take and clear the codes out of this thing. It's good to hear that fan's not running again. Alright, let's see, codes only. Let's just make sure there's no codes in ABS. There is not. Of course, we still have to drive it. 
How do you get back? Where's the back button there? Snap on. <laughs> You're freaking kidding me. Why don't I use this? Well, let me tell you why. Because it's stupid stuff like this. There's no back button. We can no longer go back. <sighs> freaking snap on. I tell you what. Now we got to re enter our information again. So we're waiting for old Snappy to go back through her thing again here. Uh, chances are if we clean the throttle body we would probably restore uh, our correct idle. I'm sure it's adaptive and it may be goofed up now or chances are if we drive it it'll readapt. Uh, there's one code stored in the body module, body one ECU switch circuit diagnosis. I have no idea if that is an old code or not. We will leave that for the time being. I'm going to take and fire it back up. I'm going to go into engine data. I want to see if there is a desired idle versus, you know, actual, because that'll give us a big clue right there. Because I can say you even bump it up just a smidge, and it starts to idle well. Uh, let's look at engine data, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if Toyota has that data pit or not. Or if there's a throttle relearn procedure, let's see, engine speed. Right now we're at 660 RPMs. I'll take my foot off it. Goes down to about 500, which is probably too low. Start your signal check mode. I don't believe Toyota does. Let's try to throw some loads on here. Let me just kick on the AC. Let's give her some give her some loads. Yeah, right there, it's charging. Well, it doesn't like the AC. AC's flashing, so it must be no good. We'll just poke here real quick. I don't know how strong Snap-on is on Toyota as far as tests go. Well, let's see here. There was electronic throttle control data there. Perhaps that'll give us some insight. So GMs are pretty famous, uh, you know, if the battery's been disconnected, they do not like to idle because it resets all their adaptives and, you know, dirty throttle bodies, they just will not idle. It takes them about, you know, five or ten minutes to kind of relearn to pick it back up. Uh, engine speed. Of course, I got my foot on the throttle a little bit right now. Yeah, like I say, it's idle on just above 400, which cannot be right. Pop back out. Uh, and we back actuator test check mode. Uh, these are all just controls. Uh, memory reset. I don't remember that. Let's just. Here to see what it does. Now it goes down even lower. I'm tempted at this point to just go drive it or clean the throttle body. Let's see what we want to do. I'm going to take and pull our battery back out. I want to take and bundle those wires up, put some tape on them kind of interesting to you know know the series of events of how that happened you know what made that wire bare and then burn through or rub through and then melt and you know obviously clearly was shorted to another circuit so you know one of the few problems you can have with a wire open high resistance or short to another circuit you know short to power short to ground or short to another circuit those are the only wiring problems you can ever have regardless of whatever circuit you're working on, open, high resistance, or short. And just remember, when you say short, that's kind of, you know, short in a nutshell, I guess it would be. A lot of people say short to power, short to ground, but there's also short to another circuit, which we had in this case. Uh, being that, um, you know, if I wanted to sit here and keep blowing fuses and uh, letting things smoke, I think we would have found that our full-time power to the alternator was back feeding uh, through our other uh, keyed ignition source uh, 
that ECU IG fuse. I think we would have found that that was hot when it wasn't supposed to be or vice versa, whichever one was not supposed to be. And then I'm sure we would have found that uh, one of our fan control wires, uh, you know, the control side of the relay or something was also shorted, uh, would be my assumption. That's why her fans were always running. Now I do want to make sure that both fans work. I do see that when it was acting up that only this fan was on. So I want to make sure we have no other blown fuses, you know, no other repercussions because of this. Uh, I'm going to take and just tape this up for right now. I think it would be ridiculous to, you know, go to Toyota, get these connectors, you know, splice it all in. It, that's just my opinion. Uh, if this was my vehicle, this is exactly how I would fix it. Uh, the only hindrance would be is if somebody has to remove the fuse box for whatever reason, but I think at that point you probably got some bigger fish to fry. So we're gonna tape this up, get this clicked back on, get the battery put back in. I'm just curious if we should do the... I think what we'll do is we'll take and drive it, see if the throttle readapts uh, at an idle, because certainly we can't, we gotta have it charging at an idle, which I guess we could clean the throttle body also, that would alleviate that problem, which is probably not too big of a circus. Maybe we'll do that and then go drive it and we should be good. Before I forget, one of my viewers sent me these little mini rolls of Super 33. So Super 33 is one of my favorite tapes. The rolls are humongous and I always save a bunch of half rolls so you can have little ones. And they sell little ones. That is pretty awesome. I just wanted to share that with you. So I'm breaking open a fresh one. I love me some Scotch 33. Thing. It's back together, taped up and happy. I gave the throttle body a quick on-car scrub down. Oh, I just did my brush. She was a little filthy. <laughs> Had quite a ring in there. So you can see now I started up idling about 700. So we're happy with that. That is where it should be. I think 7, 750 would be a tappy spot. We'll make sure that it's charging now and it should be. Of course, like I said, I don't know what the heck's underneath this car rattling, but it's pretty noisy. Oh, battery's going dead in this little guy, so we're going to have to hurry. Whoa! Make sure it's charging, sitting here at night. Oh, I got the headlights on, high beams on. And we're charging at 13.9, as you can see. So that's good, a quick little scrub of the throttle body. Now we don't have to worry about how fast it's going to adapt. I don't know on Toyota's how quick they adapt, but that's always the fastest way to shortcut the process uh, let's see I think everything turned out good I'll show you hang on you're going for a ride so that's what the final fix looks like we did put her uh, spare fuse back in so we got to put this cover back on the batteries tightened back up put the bolts back in that air cleaner is all buttoned back on I think we're good we just need to take it for a shake and see if we addressed all of our complaints, ABS lights, speedometer didn't work, shift interlock. What else? I think that's about it, right? I'm sure somebody's going to ask why we uh, switched to the Alto. Frankly, I got sick of restarting the snap-on to make it work. I switched to Old Reliable. time I said that in the video people were like why is the flex plate broken Let's see if it shifts apparently it wouldn't shift before either she shifts nice and smooth speedometer works let's we'll take a little zipper on the block pretty sure we got this one licked no green crusties strike again I think that's it folks, we're back in the shop. One thing I neglected to do is to make sure the fans work as they're designed to. Uh, I'm letting it warm up here. It's, uh, you know, after I test drive, it's almost 190. I'm 
gonna have to look on the diagram again to see. I don't know if both fans got the rear defogger on. I don't know if both fans function as engine cooling fans or one's a cooling fan uh, and one works with the AC. That I don't know. Uh, I will take a look here probably while it's warming up and then uh, just make sure that they kick on. Temperature gauge doesn't seem that accurate. It's like a little over half and it's only, you know, only at 190. Um, so I just want to be, you know, 100% sure before I give this back to the customer that everything is hunky-dory. I'm confident with the repair that we did and uh, as we do in a lot of videos like this where there are multiple, you know, weird issues, you know, where do you start? Well, we picked the easiest thing, the alternator. Alternator led us to some blown fuses. I said, ah, crap, some blown fuses because fuses don't just blow, you know, for no reason. Yes, there's going to be somebody in the comments that says, yes, you know, over, you know, a bazillion years they can wear from thermal expansion, this and that. In normal situations, fuses in your car do not just blow for no reason. Uh, with that being said, sometimes that can be frustrating because we'll put a fuse in, we'll look at power distribution, we'll see what feeds it, and then try to find the short. In this case, it didn't take us long, we just had to follow the smoke uh, because clearly that connector was you know, melted, wires were touching. What was the original cause? I don't know. Was it just corrosion? terminal fretting you know made the wires hot made them eventually you know melt together and then you know one thing led to the next that is my assumption other than that I, I don't know um, but that's what I would believe would be the likely cause you know water intrusion corrosion fretting something like that something to create resistance create the heat connectors melt and then you know voila it's a recipe for disaster uh, not anymore because there's no more connector I think that soldering the wires was uh, the way to go uh, simply because I believe buying, you know, whether that one connector is part of the fuse box, which I think it is, because I believe they're terminated permanently up in the fuse box. Now you're talking getting the entire fuse box. Uh, that would be, you know, that would just be prohibitive. I think the fan just kicked on. It's a 195.8. Yeah, I just heard it kick back off. I'm going to pop the hood and see which one's running. Um, yeah. I think that's it. Be sure to leave your questions, comments, criticisms in the comment box below. Let me know what you think, what you would do, how you would fix it, whether you would buy connectors, uh, whether you think our approach was good or not. Um, I don't see what was wrong with it personally, but we could have looked at a number of things. We could have looked at the shift interlock. We could have looked at the cooling fans, and I think we would have ended up at the same conclusion no matter where we started. Always start simple. While you're down there leaving your comment, click subscribe, ring the bell, all that business. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. Looks like they both kicked on and they both kicked off. Fantastic. Get it? Fantastic.